Eyes of Ida, Bill's the boat, and eyes of Ida, sailor, and eyes of Ida, kick the fish, and bring them on the lighter. If you find the sunny, the door, if you find the sunny, brown, or four, two, you're more than all the one, sir. Eyes of Ida, Bill's the boat, and eyes of Ida, sailor, and eyes of Ida, kick the fish, and bring them on the lighter. If you find the sunny, the door, if you find the sunny, brown, or four, two, you're more than all the one, sir. Sides are ice, a cup of your plate cake, a tea with a beer, catfish in the spring of the year, a night of negative butter. Hip, the fried and sunny, the bowl, hip, the fried and sunny, brown, a full, a tiny and more, and I'm all around the circle. Hey, thank you, ladies thank and gentlemen. You. You and good evening to you people out there watching us on your tubes right now. <laughs> Hope you'll enjoy the next half hour of the... And the tellies. <laughs> and the telly. <laughs> uh, the Eyes to Buy show. Good old Newfoundland and Irish music. And of course, we've got a very special guest on the day. Well, we're glad to have him back for the again on our show, Mr. Ben Plowman. And we'll be hearing from Ben in a little while. Now, uh, before that, for and of... <laughs> I don't forget her old buddy over there, you know, Clayton Combs. He's always there in the corner waving at us. Hey, Clayton. Hello. <laughs> Do you feel any better the last time you were sick? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Now then, I'm going to give a thing up. Randy, what are you going to do for us, boy? One card, the Shores of Newfoundland. Shores of Newfoundland. Called by Brian Finn. <laughs> The sun shone bright that day as I stood there on the strand. My father holding back a tear while mother held my hand. Say, son, you know I wish you well, though I'll never understand. While you must roam and leave your home on the shores of Newfoundland. My mother's words I scarcely heard, I was too blind to see. So full of self-importance and no fishing boats for me. I bent and gently kissed my mom and shook my father's hand. While mother cried, I bid goodbye to the shores of Newfoundland. I traveled far and wide And found the grass look greener When you're on the other side Then thoughts of home soon filled my mind I was a sorry man I cursed the day I sail away From the shores of Newfoundland young and old But now I walk the city street and no one takes my hand I miss the friends I live behind on the shores of Newfoundland Today I got a letter from my poor old mother dear Saint son, your daddy's feeble now Time is drawing near That little girl you used to love Has wed another man But you'll always have a sweetheart son While I'm in Newfoundland 
Tonight I'm sailing across the sea, no longer I'm alone. I look and see the northern light, and I know I'm at home. Tomorrow morning I'll greet my mom and hold my father's hand. And stay at home no more, I roam from the shores of Newfoundland. You stay at home no more, I'll roam from the shores of Newfoundland. Thank you. Thank you so much, folks. And that's, that's very good. You know? You like that? That's a bit of all right. Works for me. What do you say, Clay? Oh, yes, please. Huh? Do you think you got good eyesight? <laughs> 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 huh? He's the only man who can sit down here and see uh, the floor manager, Mr. Chief, there, right over about 20 feet away <laughs> in the corner. He's shaking his fist at him, huh? He's big enough to see you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yes, Meanwhile. anyway, getting back to the order of things. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so on and so on. Yes. Right. <laughs> Here's a song from our first album, one called uh, The Bunch of Time. No. Right? <laughs> and Mr. Reynolds here is going to do that for you. We hope. I'm going to do we it. We hope. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now yes, to go to our special guest, Mr. Ben Plowman. So, Ben, take it away. Thank you very much, boys. I'm going to be doing a couple of stories here tonight with the, with the boys from Eyes to Buy. And there are stories that's included in a book I just had done uh, called uh, Born and Bred on the Rock. Uh, one of the more favorite stories in the book itself is uh, a story called Duckbound. And it's a story about uh, a trip me and two of my buddies took a few years ago on a duck hunting trip. And it goes something like this. "'Twas the 20th of September, how well I do remember. We left for St. John's all on the board teach speedboat flying. Baza was at the wheel, me and Bradley was at the guns. We were standing on a gun walls. We were going to have some fun. Duck in the water, Basil cried. Me and Bradley loaded with number five. There was a splatter of bees all over the water. What was left of the duck, we didn't bother. We continued on for St. John's Island. Pigeon Cove we hoped to make by seven. Landed in the beach by Uncle Mike's camp. Basil had the munchies and Bradley had the cramps. Up through the woods, Basil flied. Put on the blowney, Bradley cried. The job for me was to moor up the boat. I used two grape ones and a coil of rope. We tucked in our bunk somewhere around 11. Bradley fell to his knees and started praying. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the feast of baloney. Tomorrow we should have duck and paste to a company. We woke next morning somewhere around 10. It was an alarm clock. It was Basil break a wind. Get up, Basil said. There's hunting to be done. We had beans for breakfast and we grabbed our guns. Well, we hunted for nearly all that day, but for supper we had beech burrs and a soggy pastry. At hunting we figured we were good, no doubt. We had to change the berry picking when the shells ran out. Now, berry picking was never our favorite game. We only did it because of the wind and rain. For the wind came on and we got storm bound. We had to go picking berries or go insane. Three days later, the wind went down. We loaded our berries and we're homeward bound. When we landed at the wharf, Basil's father rushed down, backed up his chocolate tailgate down. Throw up your berries, Basil, he roared. I got a sale on your berries up in the store. Basil threw up a little sandwich bag, fell to the top. He's father missed the berries and the berries did drop. Over the wharf, the berries did roll. Tid nearly fainted when he saw a little bag full. Basil said, Daddy, by gallons, we had nine, but we had to change them in the jam when we got storm bound. Now, that was the story we told our folks, how we survived on jam for three days and three nights. The young folks don't seem to take it down. They think we were all lying about being storm bound. Thank you. <clears throat> There's another, another version of that one. Uh, first, when I started telling a few stories and recitations, people said that we Newfoundlanders talk too fast. And uh, I know I talk fast myself, but uh, mainlanders and other people are just going to have to listen a little bit faster, I guess. So just see if you can pick the bones out of this one. It was the 20th of September. How well I do remember. I left for St. John's all on the board. Teased people flying. Basil was at the wheel. Me and Bradley was at the guns. We were standing on the gun We were going to have some fun. Duck in the water, Basil cried. Me and Bradley loaded with number five. There was a splatter of bees all over the water. It was lifted the duck. We didn't batter. We continued on for St. John's Island, and pitching over the hotel to make by seven, landing at the beach, Markham Wicks camp, Basil the Munchies, Bradley the Cramps. Up to the woods, Basil fly, put on a blowney, Bradley cried. The job for me was to mort a boat, I used the grapes at a collar rope. Tucked in the bunks somewhere around ten, Bradley fell to his knees and started praying, Lord, I thank you for the feast of baloney, tomorrow we're duck and paste to company. Old next morning, somewhere around ten, it wasn't learning like it was. Basil break a wind, get up, Basil said, there's something to be done, we had beans and breakfast and grab your guns. Well, we hunted for nearly all that day, but for supper we had beach was in a soggy pastry, and hunting we figured we were good, don't do it, we had to change beer when the shells ran out. Now, berry picking wasn't our favorite game, we only did it because of the wind and rain, for wind coming out, we got star and bell, and we had to go picking berries, to go insane. Three days later, the wind went down, loaded the berries, homeward bound, landed at the wharf, Tid rushed down, backed up, truck and the tailgate down. Throw up your berries, Basil, he roared, I got sell on your berries up in the store. Basil throw up a little semi, fell to the top, he's fighting Mr. Beers, the beers to drop. Over the wharf, the beers to roll, totally defending when he saw a little bag. Well, Basil's a daddy, but he also had no way to change him in the jam when we got star bound. That was the story we told our folks, so we survived on jam for three days, and Trinity's never told Seaman to take it down and take Raw Line, but being a star bound. Take that one and smoke it in your pipe. Between two trees, we bow 
to eternity. The trees look down, look down as all to say, God bless your love and bless your wedding day. Between two trees, the years have swiftly flown. Thank you, folks. And Ben, you know, that was just great. That was know? great stuff, Ben. I yeah. challenge anyone from the, from the western part of the mainland to come down and say that as fast as you do that. You must have been going fairly miles an hour, aren't you, Ben? God, I'd say he's over the speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ben. It's just great. Great. <laughs> he didn't get his tongue tangled up his teeth. But no. I'm telling you, like, right. some, like some of us, I know. There's only certain people does that. That's gets the tongue right. caught in their teeth. Right. Now. We'd like to thank uh, Mr. and Mrs. Otto Wells for supplying us with the backdrop for the guests there. All right, with all those uh, corks and antlers and laps of pots and what's that other thing over there? A boy, is it? That's a boy. Made of a plastic bottle. Yes. There you it's go. Ever tell of a boy the made from plastic bottle? up was Mr. Flamman, you know that. Yeah. Ben. But anyway, so. We're going to continue on. We will continue on with the show. Yes. Right? What are you going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you. <laughs> I was going to tell you a story, but I don't think yeah, I got time. No, I d we, don't ha we don't have time. We don't have time. No. Wayne's going with his hand. Did you hear tell her that the, the uh, raspberries? Oh, forget. 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 <laughs> I won't tell you. Right? Yes, wait. Oh, God, uh, I don't work for a living. <laughs> I 
Thank you, thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Now, put your hands together and, and give us a big hand for our special guest, Ben Plowman. Ben, take it away. <coughs> thank you. <coughs> I'd like to do another uh, another story here this evening from from the book, and uh, it's the first time doing this one, so I'm going to give it a try, and I'd like to send it out to uh, people over on uh, Bell Island, and uh, seeing that as this time of the year again, moose hunting time, it's about the moose he had over there a few years ago. Uh, a lot of us know about it, and I do believe he's still over there. I call it the Fraggle Rock Romance. <clears throat> <laughs> Was the ninth day of October in the year of 81, the story of Royal Bill Isle first begun. Between the islands, mainland, and the shores off Bill Isle, a bull moose swam the tickle, a distance off Tree Moyle. Then in the early fall in the year of 86, now five or six years older, very proud and under six, Royal Bill saw a lovely cow with others that hung so low, but he did not realize then that she was a dairy cow. Not knowing that the cow was of the wrong type, Wild Bell did approach her one lonely moonlight night. The cow was quite surprised and very embarrassed, no doubt, and Wild Bell popped a question and he asked the dairy out. Now the dairy belt for comfort and not that kind of speed turned Wild Bell down flat, saying, I don't have the need. Then Wild Bell got really mad and he went out on the loose and he started making passes at was oddly shaped moose. It was Wild Bell's desire to mate with a dairy cow, but with no formal sex education, he really didn't know how. So Wild Bell continued to harass the dairies all around, thus creating a problem in nearby Wabana Town. So the Wabana Town Council quickly met to discuss 
the fate of Wild Bill, who was making quite a fuss. And their first decision was to get rid of Wild Bill, send him back across the tickle. He's only a nuisance, what the hell. But before he was deported, Islanders began to feel sorry because Wild Bill had been their only moose now for years without a worry. So instead of getting rid of Wild Bill, who was taking it calmly, they said let's bring in the meat so Wild Bill can start a family. Meanwhile, in nearby Porterville, a caribou herd of Wild Bill. He said all day to sheep, different species, what the hell. The buck was old but able, with not much of a stance, and he was looking for a partner for a senior citizen's romance. But meanwhile, back on Bell Island, though, Wild Bill went without shame, and by the middle of October, he was getting international fame. News reporters phoned from a far away as Alaska and spoke to a Mr. Crane Sr., the man who minds the pasture. They were all inquiring about the love life of Wild Bill and the plight of the dairies that it fell for as well. As one local farmer put it about Wild Bill on the loose, the cows don't say moo anymore. All they say is moose. <laughs> but it just goes to show you how lonely a bull moose can get. If he can't be with his own kind, then he'll love the ones he's with. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, boy. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Good stuff, Ben. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> that's quite good. <laughs> ah, there's only Ben could do it like that. I tell you, that's, that's really something. Now we got a number here called uh, <laughs> Pub with No Beer. Campfire at night, wild donkeys call. But there's nothing more lonesome, lonesome or real or rare than to stand in the bar of a pub with no beer. Well, the pub began anger for the poor to come. There's a far away look on the face of the bum. The maids got all cranky and the cook sacked and queer. Oh, what a terrible place, it's a pub with no beer. Oh, when the stackman rides up, oh, when he's dry, just he shouts. Goes up to the bar and has a wad from his coat. Ah! But then when he's told, he says, what's this I hear? I rode 15 miles to a pub with no beer. When the shaggy walks in, covered in dust and flies. He lays down his roll and wipes the sweat from his eyes. But the smile on his face quickly turns to a sneer. Oh, when the barman says sadly, the pub got no beer. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for this half hour of Eyes the Boy show. I'd like to thank Ben Plowman. Thank you so much, Ben. We really enjoyed that this evening. So we're going to have you back again. You know, you're welcome to the show anytime. And our man back up on the guitar there, Mr. Clayton Coons, thank you so much, Clay. Hope to see you next time. And a big, so long you people are still watching. Standing in the bar of a public.